What's going on Lego Maniacs? It's Ty, the Lego guy here, and welcome to Ty's Talks, a Q&A series, episode 35. This one had some interesting questions, including, are interiors in modern Lego sets becoming too small? What are the best classic Lego sets? What are my thoughts on the Bad Batch season two, along with a bunch of other really good questions? And again, if you have questions for next Ty's Talks, just leave them in the comments and we'll get to them in episode 36. But enough talk, let's get right into it. And our first question comes to us from Fats Words Man's Ledge. And he says, question, out of all the classic sets you own, can you rank five of them by these categories? So your first question is current favorite, probably gonna be the Neptune Discovery Lab. Recently got that one and I really, really like it. I wouldn't say it's the best out of all of them, but because it's the most recent that I bought, I just, you know, I'm really liking that set. I think it's awesome. Love the base plates, love the look, the yellow and, re and yellow and blue really make it pop. As far as my most valuable, it's probably the Amazon Ancient Ruins. That set's going for almost 400 USD, used in good condition. Although if we're gonna up it a little bit, let's say we go to 2010, the Imperial Flagship is by far my most valuable classic set, if we wanna call that classic, since it is going for like close to a thousand USD used, which is crazy. Uh, my most nostalgia, uh, it's probably gonna be the Fort Lego Rado or the Exploring Starship, both great models, although there's a couple others that kind of come to mind. And my least popular opinion, one you think others would not agree on. It's probably, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I know there's a lot of 80s space lovers out there. And I don't get me wrong, I like 80s space sets as well, but my hot take would be is I think that the 90s space sets were generally better. Like I'm talking like Mtron, Blacktron, Explorine, Spirus, Unitron. I think that's when Lego space really hit its height, and I hope Lego returns the, the, to that kind of a uh, space theme. I mean, take a look at this new Blacktron set that they just made. Looks absolutely awesome. That's probably my hot take. I don't know how hot of a take it is, but yeah, I just think that the 90s space sets were probably the best, although the 80s and the stuff that they've made after has also been pretty good. And you had one more question, which was my oldest. It's, I, I think my oldest classic set is probably the Enchanted Island. Really cool set. I didn't have that when I was a kid. I recently did get just get that set, but uh, I think that's the oldest model in my collection. DFW Bricks says, what is your favorite classic pirate ship? And do any of the modern pirate ships come close to comparing to the classics in your opinion? Okay, so great question. I love pirates. My favorite pirate ships, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be very classic here. I'm gonna say the original Barracuda. I think it's awesome. And as far as do any of the modern pirate ships come close, some people like to say that the Creator 3-in-1 pirate ship, oh, that's just as good. I, I wouldn't say that. It doesn't even have cloth sails. I do like that set though, but I'd have to say probably the Imperial flagship. That model definitely comes close to comparing. I think it does compare with the classic pirate ships. It's an awesome set, as well as the Pirates of Barracuda Bay, Pretty good model. Now it doesn't have a cannon deck when it's in ship mode. That's my only reason why I wouldn't really say it comes close to comparing or doesn't quite compare, but I still do really like that model. I'm really hoping that we get a pirate theme returning soon and we can get some smaller pirate ships too. But uh, yeah, really good question. Yeah, those are probably gonna be the choices that I go with. Karma Brick Creations asks, question, what is your top sets from each theme in Lego system? Castle, pirates, adventures, western space, and town. Okay, so for castle, I'm probably gonna go with the Royal Knights Castle. That one's just phenomenal. I'm also very nostalgic about it because I really wanted it as a kid. For pirates, I'm gonna go with the Imperial Trading Post. For adventurers, we're gonna go classic. We're gonna go with the Temple of Anubis. For Western, the Fort Lego Rado. Space, I'm probably gonna go with the Exploring Starship. And for town, I'm probably gonna go with the City Airport. I recently found out about that set and it's absolutely awesome. It's this massive airport made in like the 90s, late 80s style, and it just looks fantastic. Jess says, have you ever played Lego Racers 1? If yes, what are your thoughts on the game and do you have a favorite character in the game? Okay, so Jess, I just wanna thank you. I just recently found out from your question that they have this game on N64. When I was a kid, I saw that and I really, really wanted it. I only saw the PC version 
and I never was able to get it. I did just buy it, like literally today, the day that I am recording this. Uh, I bought the LEGO Racers 1 game on N64, so I'm gonna leave this question for next episode and I'll answer it then. But uh, thanks for the uh, reminder of this. I never would've, if you never asked this, I never would've known that it was on N64 and uh, I'm really excited to try it out. Vigard Peterson asks, do you care about the interior and sets? I personally prefer a good interior. I do not play with the sets, but I still just like to have a big interior. Lego keeps making the interior of sets smaller and smaller. And then you mentioned like the TIE Bomber. So Lego's at an interesting stage, I'd say. And this is a, this is a good question. If you have sets like, for instance, the ATTE and the Transport Scythe, they have massive interiors for the size of the sets. Or, or for instance, maybe the Lion's Knight's Castle, that also has a very large interior, like it's huge. So those sets have really large interiors, but other models like the TIE Bomber, which you mentioned, even Cad Bane's recent, what is it, the Justifier, that ha set has a very small interior to what it could have been. So I'd say it's kind of a mixed bag. I'm not sure if it's to do with the creators or what's going on, maybe certain Lego designers like having a larger interior, certain ones don't or they don't care. But yeah, I find it's very mixed. It's either it has a huge interior for the size of the set or it's very small. And hopefully Lego can make this a little bit more streamlined where we get a larger interior because I do like having a larger interior with sets. I don't play with them either, but I just think it's an added bonus to it. And yeah, I definitely agree. It's something that Lego a lot of times, especially in recent years, kind of overlooks. Alpha Bricks asks, I have two crucial questions. One, when will you get a haircut? And two, do you collect other Lego stuff besides Lego sets like Lego keychains, lights, clocks, mugs, etc.? If so, show us, or maybe you can do some separate videos on Lego collectibles. Okay, so as far as a haircut, I did recently get a haircut. Not sure if you guys can tell. I only get a haircut once every six months. I'm not a big haircut guy. That's kind of how I roll. It's just finding the time for it. Plus, I don't mind my hair a bit longer. And uh, as far as other things I collect, I think I mentioned this in an earlier episode. I'm big into, into collecting watches. When I was a kid, I uh, was really into collecting model cars. In fact, this is one of them from my, you know, when I was a kid. I try to not collect too, too many things. Oh, I also collect um, N64 games. I mentioned that before, you know, game consoles, really into doing that. I think you gotta be careful though as a Lego co uh, collector because we tend to like to collect things. But uh, yeah, those, those are probably the main things I collect. I just have to keep a watch on it because the more you collect, the more space it takes, the more money it takes, and the more time it ends up taking. And our last question comes to us from Kylo Sam, and he says, I got a question. What do you think about The Bad Batch season two? All right, I've been watching them. I think, I think I'm in season four as of the time of recording this. And uh, yeah, I like them. They're, they're much like Clone Wars. Tales of the Jedi. I believe uh, Dave Filoni is the one that's kind of directing them for the most part. And yeah, they've been good. They haven't been anything like spectacular, but yeah, I've enjoyed them. Oh, I really, really liked, okay. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but Cody, Commander Cody does show up in one of the episodes. That is one of my favorite animated episodes by far. It's always been a mystery kind of what happened to him. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to give any spoilers. Go out and watch it. I'm really liking The Bad Batch season two. Some of the episodes are like, meh, it's just filler, but some of them, like the one with Commander Cody, are extremely good. But that pretty well does this Ties Talks. As always, guys, if you have questions for next Ties Talks, just leave them in the comments and we'll get to them in episode 36. But yeah, that pretty well does the video, but if you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. And uh, if you're new to the channel, you know, definitely consider subscribing and click that bell so you're notified for any future Ties Talks. We do one of them every single month and you guys come up with a lot of interesting stuff. But that's all I got for you again. But thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.